poets used to worship for her cult was very great and very splendid. It is for this reason that they called her the Goddess of Poets by this title, and her sisters were Bridget, the woman of Leechcraft, and Bridget, the woman of Smithcraft, goddesses, three daughters of the Dagdar they, and by their names the Goddess Bridget was called by all the Irish. A character quaint and fierce, powerful yet graceful, has woven a trail across oceans and borders, cultures and languages, practices, folklore, prayer and song, creating a strangely perfect sort of unity melded only under a divine hammer. She stands watch over the delicate, serene trickle of Ireland's holy wells and stoic Welsh cathedrals. She appears in Glastonbury's called Breed, Bridget, Bridget. In Scotland, Bree, Bridey, Bridian, Brood. Wales is called a Bridget, Braid, Braid, Freight, Freid, and Freed. In what now France, she's been called Bridget or Brita. In England, she was known as Brigata or Brigantia. This is the goddess of the forge and anvil, of poets, painters, and prophets. She is a goddess of healing as well as battle, of fire as well as water, of love and of death. She blesses small animals, scars orphan children and challenges authority. She has crossed the chasm of regional land goddess to Christian saint and back again to contemporary guard goddess of global scope. Distinct as the multitude of A teacher of mine believes a whole spiritual tradition could be solely filled with Bridget devotees. In the neo-pagan community I've seen a plethora of covens dedicated to her and met more Bridget devotees than I can account. This does not include the hundreds of churches, women's groups, convents and other spiritual or secular charity organisations dedicated to Bridget. She is everywhere and she is not relegated to one fate. But who is Bridget? So much about her remains mystery. How did a goddess whose origins lay in the soils and waters of the Celtic world slowly but deftly take hold in so many places, both at the source and thousands of miles away? How did she begin, and perhaps more curiously, what has she become today? To understand the deity, one must attempt to understand the history and nature of the first people to worship the deity. Bridget originated in the pantheon of the Celtic people, the residents of Ireland and the British Isles. Much like Bridget, the history of these people is mysterious and complex. I once heard a description that exploring the Celt's historic identities like watching television with the sound off. One can kind of decipher what's going on, but quite a bit of that story is lost. Mysterious artefacts tell us about what the ancient Celts were like, but prior to the introduction of Christianity, the Celts left no written records. We are left guessing at what these pieces meant to the people who utilised them. Neighbours of the ancient Celts left most descriptive accounts, but this is a little problematic. Most of the history written about the ancient Celts was penned by foreigners or enemies who may have not had an adequate understanding of Celtic culture, or who likely wrote slanted accounts. Sometimes deities and their myths are the best informants about the people who worship them, but in looking through the deity to understand the people, we learn even more about the deity. What we do know about the ancient Celts, based on their peers' writings, is that they were envied for their beautiful clothing and jewellery, but feared on the battlefield. They are criticised for indulging in booze and sensual pleasures, but also praised for their health and fitness. So marvelled at the Celtic society, where it was said no beggars could be found, and admired their extensive hospitality to friendly guests. 
Other accounts describe the Celts as shrewdly protective of their lands and tribes, wary of strangers, unabashedly willing to shed blood to defend what was theirs. Their religious world was equally passionate, and it was from this that Bridget's iron strong legacy was born. The ancient Celtic world was a massive civilization whose height of power occurred roughly 600 BCE to 400 CE in Ireland and the British Isles, as well as what is now Portugal, northern Italy and Spain, France, southern Poland and central Turkey. It was a melting pot culture which originated from tribes that immigrated from extensive regions of the world, intermarrying with pre-Celtic indigenous peoples. Bridget likely began as a collection of goddesses, some regional Stone Age goddesses, some imported with immigrating tribes. In the way streams feed rivers, these early deities fed into Bridget, her own ancestral streams, possibly tens of thousands of years old. As Celtic culture grew, its pantheon exploded. One explorer counted over 400 deities in the British Isles alone. The names and myths of many were lost to time and eventually to religious conversion when Christianity moved in. The few that did find their way into written lore often did so centuries later through the pens of Roman explorers and Christian monks. Some were painted with a seemingly subjective slant as frightening characters that could have been the new religion's interpretation. Yet, some of these descriptions may have been somewhat accurate. Celtic deities were little representations of forces of nature which could be unpredictable and not always benevolent. Ocean gods could supply food and travel, but also could flood coastal villages and swallow sailors. Sun gods could nurture crops, but also hide behind a rain bank for months, leaving the fields to rot. Celtic goddesses were typically not gentle, loving mother figures, but aggressively voracious, highly sexual, even bloodthirsty. Ronald Hutton, in The Pagan Religions of the Ancient British Isles, points out that it is difficult to tell whether these were real reflections of the goddesses, role models for Celtic women, fantasies of the Celtic men, or the nightmarish visions of Roman explorers or the Christian monks who eventually wrote down the descriptions. In general, Celtic gods and goddesses were feared, much more than beloved. A far cry from the sedate churches or ceremonial circles of later centuries. The religion of the ancient Celts was primal, wild and fierce. Worship was less about reverence and more in line of defence against these beings. Bridget's earliest worship may have originated out of fear. Even as the Celtic culture grew, it remained far from homogised. The numerous tribes retained their own regional practices, dialects and customs, but there were still quite a few similarities. Most practised animism, a belief that all things contained a cognizant spirit. Other commonality was a term for exalted beings, bree or breed. One medieval inventory listed ten different uh, breeds, twelve breeds and three known as boat. This led researchers, goddess lovers and folklorists to believe that there was once a great goddess named Breek, later Bridget, and she ruled over the Celtic world. In reality, Breek's literal meaning of exalted one or the great lady was frequently applied to female deities as well as women in positions of power. One example in Ireland was a first century woman called Bree, who held office as a judge. It was less likely that the woman's name was Bree, and more likely as referred to her position as Supreme Judge, who was also female. Brig and its variations were attributed to sacred items, places and concepts such as Brie Gambu, or the Great Lady of Justice, or Brig Brigu, the Great Lady Who Provides, a reference to a fertile art. The Amnest spirit is often female, and so the title Brig was often applied to spirits believed to inhabit sacred places such as wells and blacksmith shops. Practices of great renown, such as the bardic arts, were also believed to contain feminine spirits, which influenced their cultivation. Over the centuries, foreign ears heard the term Brig may have assumed that it was a singular goddess who held jurisdiction over innumerable things. Over time, Brig popped into various roles, large and small, in myth and lore, and eventually evolved into a singular, massively popular figure with highly diverse traits. Brig, the exalted one, was said to be so great that a human could only reach as high as her brass shoe. While Brieg was a spirit of many things, she was primarily the green earth itself. This should not be confused with being a goddess of the earth. Brieg was not a caretaker or a steward. The earth was alive and cognizant. Brieg was its spirit and the soil, rocks, hills and rivers were her body. Today, images commonly associated with um, Brigitte include three identical women. 
but these do not appear in any pottery, monuments or artefacts from that pre-Roman Celtic era. For centuries, the Brig existed in a world and worship of the landscape alone. The Celts made few, if any, carved images of their divine. If their goddess could be seen in the earth they walked upon, was a carved image even necessary? Eventually, Brig would emerge with a chisel stone. The statue of Brig appeared in what is now Britain, where she was called Brigantia. These carvings made her their appearance in the Roman influence increased in the Celtic world. The Romans carved images of their deities and likely inspired the process. Some of the first statues and etchings of the Celtic deities were courtesy of the Romans themselves. Brigantia's first images were quite similar to those of the Roman goddess Minerva, a patroness of women, of sorry, of wisdom, war, and urban living. Like Minerva images, Brigantia was depicted wearing a helmet and carrying a spear, but her trademark image was a jug of water, which Minerva was n- not seen carrying. The water image preserved her connection to the rivers and streams sacred to the Celtic world. Minerva was indelibly the important to the Romans. Brigantia's striking similar descriptions underscore her equal importance to the Celts. One theory suggests Brigantia was a sole invention of the Romans, looking for a local goddess to identify with their newly colonised land. Hearing Brig, Brig, on the tongues of natives may confuse the Romans, leading them to assume that there was a great region goddess named Brig rather than Brig being an animist influenced title. Then again, maybe they were right. Relations between the Romans and the Celts were tense. Both groups were pillagers and plunderers of one another's resources and wars were frequent. After centuries of reciprocal sackings, the Romans ultimately took control much of the reason by striking the spiritual and political nerve centre of the Celtic world. The Druid Caste. Some believing that Brig, the exalted one, was the patron goddess of the Druids, which makes sense if one considers the exalted position of the Druids had. The Druids were the priesthood and the ultimate authority of the Celtic world. Strabo, roughly 24 BCE, described the Druids as three honoured classes, prophets, philosophers and bards. Other writers of that time era noted that, quote, no man speaks before a king and no king speaks before a Druid, unquote. But as Dru- Roman rule gradually increased throughout most of the Celtic world, the Druid priesthood was systematically disassembled and the exhausted one's presence diminished in the land named for Brigantia, or Britain. Brig remained in folklore and customs throughout the region, but it was in Ireland where the exalted one would ultimately thrive. It was there she was called Bridget, or Breed. Some believed that British Druids fleeing Roman oppression brought their Brig or as Brigantia to Ireland, where the Irish Druids quickly included her in their regional pantheon. Others argued that Bridget was in Ireland all along. Her worship, perhaps enhanced by the refugees who recognised their own versions of the Exalted One in her. Others said that Bridget was only the regional land goddess of the Irish province of Leinster and never had anything to do with the Minerva influenced Brigantia. The Romans never made it to Ireland. So while Brig, in her many forms, would dwindle in most areas, much about, about the Celtic world reigned preserved in Ireland, included, was the Exalted One. Celtic spirituality linked the number three with all things divine, and so Bridget the goddess began to appear in lore and image in triplicate form. Contemporary images of Bridget often depict her as maiden, mother and crone, associating the three sisters with the phases of the moon, waxing, full and waning. But this is not a correct correlation. Bridget has historically been considered a solar deity, and as three identical women of the same age, sometimes known as the three Bridget sisters. Woman of Healing, Ban Leish, Woman of Smithwork, Ban Gobnakta, and Woman Poet, Ban Fila. In addition to being in the living earth, Bridget was all seen as a living embodiment of spring. In Scottish folklore, Bridget was imprisoned in the Ben Nevis mountain by the Calloch, the winter hag, every year when, Bridget's, when winter set in and released in the early days of spring. In other depictions, Bridget and the Kellogg were sometimes the same goddess with two faces, one comely and one haggard. Bridget was credit, credited with milk production and would occur around the t- beginning of February as the holiday of Imbolg, uh, were a meaning of milk or in the belly. For this reason, she was also credited as patroness of sheep and cattle. Bridget's characteristic represented those held in highest regard 
by Celtic culture, her prominent presence continued even as Christianity crept into Ireland. As Christianity spread across Europe, the gods of indigenous faiths were either disregarded by the church or absorbed into folklore. Some were demoted to demons in the new Christian lore, others were transformed into heroes of a legendary past where they continued to be revered with magic and significance. Still others, particularly those of paramount importance, were adopted as saints. The role of beloved saint was the next chapter for Bridget. The idea of a beloved god or goddess of an ancient pagan history turning into a saint can be a painful one for those who love old religions and goddess worship. For many, the movement from god to saint may seem like demotion, although those who have loved and honoured the saints would likely disagree. Particularly in the case of Bridget, the new saint lost few, if any, of her goddess characteristics and was revered with power and prestige in Ireland on a level only rivaled by Patrick. St. Bridget was identified with the Christian mother goddess figure of Mary, as Mary of the Gales, or sometimes the foster mother of Christ, and in some stories as Mary's midwife. With the exception of the archangels, very few saints enjoy such inclusion with the two most important figures in Catholic Christianity. Even so, St. Bridget is a, an unsaintly character, one known for screeching across battlefields or flagrant defiance against church leaders. St. Bridget is both historical figure and character of folklore, and shared more than a name with her pagan goddess counterpart. It is true, St. Bridget, that the clearest glimpse into Bridget goddess can be found. The great, great cathedral of St. Bridget in Kildare, Ireland, is believed to have been founded by the saint herself. It is widely accepted that the church was built upon an even older pagan shrine, where a perpetual fire was kept in honour of the goddess Bridget. Like the legacy of Brig, Bridget was probably a title rather than a name for a leading druidess, the Brig or Great Lady of Kildare. This Bridget oversaw the shrine's care, later leading to its conversa- conversion from pagan to Catholic. Perhaps the crafty leader saw a way to preserve veneration of the sacred sites under a seemingly inevitable Christian transformation and coordinated in her own terms. The story goes that the Druidess nun was consecrated as Bishop of Kildare by accident. According to legend, the Bishop Ibar, performing the liturgical rite, read from the wrong passage and gave Bridget a status of power unheard of for women, even in contemporary Catholicism. If the story is true, it was most certainly not an accident. Druidesses commonly held high posts, although nuns did not. To keep the respected Druidess in a powerful position would have been to the church's advantage, strengthening alliances with the local population. After her death, she became St. Bridget. Even in the new faith, Bridget remained exalted. This character entered lore with the same ferocity and warriorship found in the pagan goddess, as well as relentless work against poverty. St. Bridget was known for giving anything she possibly could to those in need. After her death, this important lady was buried in the church of Kildare in an elaborate co- coffin and reportedly surrounded by treasures and gifts from the community. Shortly thereafter, grave robbers stripped the tomb of its riches, of its riches although a sad crime when we consider what sorts of treasures his- history has lost, it is true to the legacy of the saints who, even in debt, continued to give all that she had to those in need. St. Bridget was sometimes said to have had a woman friend or fellow nun in the convent named Darluca, the literal translation which means daughter of the god Lou, who herself became the leader of the Kildare Abbey upon Bridget's death. Other stories say that the Bridget was actually Darluca and daughter of the god Lou herself, Bridget being all her only title. Bridget and Darluca reportedly shared a bed each night. One day, Bridget caught Darluta gazing at a passing warrior. Bridget demanded that she walk in shoes packed with red-hot coals as penance, either in sanctity of her constant vows of chastity or possibly to subdue Bridget's personal jealousy, indicating that the two were lovers. The coals and the rage were among many. Many other traits are resonant far more with a pagan fire and war goddess than a standard saint. Additionally, the church Kildare has lost few of its pagan roots. Kildare, or Kildara, means Church of the Oak Tree. Oak is not in the tree regularly honoured in Christian lore, nor are perpetual fires commonly dedicated to Catholic saints, yet both are prominent in the reverence of St. Bridget. The gap between the pagan and Christian rites of Bridget are quite small indeed. 
St. Bridget formed an important link in the religious and spiritual life of the first Irish Catholics in bridging the ancestral religion with the newly imported. St. Bridget was known for her miracles of healing, care for animals, particularly livestock to produce milk, as did her pagan incarnation, dedication to the poor and fighting oppressive forces, including, and sometimes especially, church leaders. St. Bridget cannot be cast off as a modification of the goddess. Rather, the canonization of Bridget as a Catholic saint preserved her and stands as a testimony of the goddess's enduring importance. Bridget's influence did not stop on the shores of her homeland. From the early 1700s to about the mid-1800s, nearly half a million Irish slaves were transported to the West Indies especially to the likes of Trinidad, French Guiana and Suriname, alongside enslaved African workers. Practices and religious beliefs of the Irish and various African cultures were shared under torturous conditions. The religion of Wudan, sometimes called Voodoo, was born in the Caribbean from the cohesion of these and indigenous island practices. Wudan is composed of spiritual beings called Loa, or also called Loa, which could be compared to exalted ancestors or a form of saints or angels. This is far from a comprehensive explanation of the world of Wudan, and I ex encourage those who are intrigued by this passage to seek out further knowledge. Approaching and sharing this material is tricky for me as a writer and as a druid. I have a deep love and respect for the practices, culture and history of Wudan, yet I am not an initiate of it, nor as part of my ancestral heritage, because of my lack of direct experience, I have not included Wudan practices or rituals in this video, as I am without the founding to do them proper justice. Still, a good overview of the complex world of Bridget could not be complete without investigating uh, Mama Bridget. Many Catholic saints whose devotees passed through these islands found new roles and life in the Udon religion. Among them was Saint Bridget, who was reborn as the Loa Mama Bridget, the Lady of the Cemetery. Mama Bridget is the only Wa with white skin and red hair. She is sore for issue pertaining to justice or a contact in the Gide or the ancestral spirits. Mama Bridget is a tough character, often described as profanity spewing, hardened presence, yet still full of fierce love. She is made up of a presence which that could wrap up someone in the toughest motherly embrace or cut with a hidden blade if crossed. She is symbolised by a black rooster and known for donning bright, clashing costumes use of rancid profanity and flagrant sexuality. My mom Bridget lives in an oak tree in the cemetery and is married to Baron Samde, a loa of the dead. The first woman buried in any cemetery is called the Bridget and considered sacred to Mama. Other, likewise, the first man buried in that cemetery is known as the Baron. Mama is, a love, is known to love spicy rum drink called Piman, which is infused with a combination of 21 hot peppers. This drink is often offered as circles honouring her as a way to test a person is mounted by Maman Bridget. The, con the concoction is intense to a mortal living person could not hold a drink in their mouth without help from the divine. Persons possessed by Maman are known to rub the hot rum in their genitals, another telltale sign of possession. If a mortal cannot hold a drink in their mouth, the drink is certainly not going to end up willing in their privates without the divine help. The practice referred to as being mounted or by ridden by a loa refers to type of um, ritual possession akin to the way that a mortal person would ride a horse. The person is under complete control of the Wa and is known to be able to perform certain feats unthinkable under normal circumstances. The festival of uh, Fetgid honours Maman Bridget on November the 1st, a day chaired by the Celtic Fire Festival of Samhain, which is believed to be the day when the winter hag Caelach whisked Bridget away until spring. Some argue that Maman Bridget's connections to Bridget are overblown or often contrived, citing that Bridget's fire and wells stand in too stark a contrast to Maman Bridget's patronage of debt and the cemetery. Others argue that the name, appearance, championship for justice and connection to the oak tree are parallels too strong to ignore. There is a Wudan song that goes, Maman Bridget who came from England, which is considering Bridget's history as a brigantia may have been more basis in, for connection. On my last trip to Kildare Cathedral, I asked the cemetery groundskeeper where I could find the grave of the first woman buried there. St. Bridget herself was the first, he said. Bridget was our own Bridget. Perhaps the connection made its way across the Atlantic and south to the Caribbean islands, expanding the web of influence both the revered Irish fire goddess and the beloved Loa. <laughs>